guys, welcome back to another Bible study. Today, we have again Brother G and Brother Jave. We'll be discussing John chapter 7, verses 25 to 35. To begin, we'll have a prayer by Brother Gio, and to end off, we'll have a prayer by me. Father in heaven, we bless your name. We give you glory and we give you honor. It is because of your will and your grace that we have the breath of life in our lungs this morning. For that we say thank you. Your word tells us that you invite us in to your mercy seat. You invite us in to where you sit on the throne. You invite us into your bosom, into your gates, and into your courts so that we can develop a, a level of intimacy on an individual basis, oh Lord. And so this morning we accept that invitation. As we delve into your word, Father God, I pray that you would reveal things to us that we've never seen before, that your word would touch us in places that have never been touched before, oh Lord. I pray that our hearts would be receptive to that which you've shown us, which you will show us. I pray that our minds will be already made up to be obedient to that which you're telling us to do. And Father God, I pray that you give us eyes to see things, Lord God, in the spiritual realm that would help us and help all those who are watching. Father, again, we glorify your name. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. To give a mini recap of what uh, happened in verses 14 to 25. Uh, when this was after um, Jesus went into the party, how he, um, this, well, I don't know exactly how he went in secretly, but then he was just observing what um, the people there were trying to say about him. And he went up into the mountains, and that's when he started, um, started to teach. And they was asking him a bunch of questions about if he's a messiah or not, how does he know all this? Things and then he went in to explain it, and that's where we end the 25, right? Yes, mm -hmm. all right. So then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Howbeit we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet to come. So you see, like, these people are still trying to, still out to get him, right? And we all know why, because he's saying that he is the Christ. Yeah. In verse yeah, 25. Their, their perception uh, of, uh -huh, go ahead. But in verse 25, that kind of kind of confuses me because um, I don't remember which verse. It was either in 20-something or 18. Uh, Jesus said that, that you were trying to kill me. And then it was like, who's trying to kill you? So then... In verse 25, when they were saying, like, um, when they said, uh, then said some of them of Jerusalem, um, is this not he whom, whom they seek to kill? It kind of, like, confused me because earlier they was like, who's trying to kill you? Now they're like, oh, he's, like, not, how would that make sense, what I was trying to say? So, wait. You about verse 19. Yeah. Verse Verse 19? Yeah, because... Yeah, verse 19. Because verse 19 says, um, Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you kept the law? Why go ye about to kill me? And they, they uh, and then in 20-something, it says, The people answered and said, Thou has a devil. Who got... Got it. About to kill D. Yeah, let me let me scroll up. So, nineteen. Mm -hmm. 
This is what my Bible says. It says, Moses gave you the law, but none of you obeyed, obeys it. Mm-hmm. The Jewish leaders were proud of the law of Moses, but ironically, in trying to kill Jesus, they were breaking the law. So they, they're these devout Jews and super religious. They know this and all of this stuff, but yet they're still trying to kill Jesus. So that's what he's saying in 19. Moses gave you the law, but none of you obey it. In fact, you were trying to kill him. So the very people that are so religious and they want to do this and do that are the same ones trying to kill him. How does that add up with the law? It's pretty much what he's asking. And also, Jesus went um, not far on the law. He called them out. Because you remember on the, the day of, wait, that, what's, it, for, what's the name of that holy day that they don't do work on again? The Sabbath? Sabbath? Yeah, the Sabbath. They follow the law of circumcision, and Jesus pointed out that that's doing work. So technically, y'all are not following the um, rules of Sabbath day, too. So he's like, why do y'all trying to punish me for it when y'all didn't follow it either? Not coming from Moses, but from the patriarchs. He circumcised the boy. Oh, I see what you're saying. Verse 20. Um, so 19. I'm gonna read the NIV. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet, not one of you keep the law. Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon possessed. The crowd answered, "Who is trying to kill you?" Jesus said to them, "I did one miracle, and you were all amazed." Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses, but from the patriarchs, meaning the forefathers, um, you circumcise a boy on the Sabbath. Now, if a boy can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Hypocrites. Yeah. So he's calling them out, right? So stop judging me, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. This, so this is their whole issue. Like, there's no way this man dressed regular and plain like this um, and quote unquote, pulling up these magic tricks. Like, he can't be the Christ. He can't be, right? They, they, they want this king of glory to come in, you know, looking a certain way, you know, riches, gold, and and. They're looking at that. They're looking at the outward appearance of Christ, right? Mm-hmm. And and it doesn't line up with their image. And it's been like this with them for quite some time. Even when they they when they they begged and pleaded for God to give them a king, um, because all the other nations around them had kings. And God was like, "Why do you want a king? I am your king." And he was like, "Okay, you want a king? Cool." They chose somebody, I think it was King Saul was the first one. They chose somebody based on their appearance. He was tall, he was like the biggest of everybody. I guess you know, they, say, they, say he was, they say he was a handsome, easy on the eye type. They gave a full description of what it looked like. And it was all out of appearance, but they did not seek after a king based off of his heart's condition or his heart's position. And so, um, verse 20, so verse 25, he says, at that, at, at that point, some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, isn't this the man they are trying to kill? Um, so I'll keep going to NIV, right, just to give me an understanding of what's happening. This is verse 26. Here he is speaking publicly, and they are not saying a word to him. Have the authorities really concluded that he is the Messiah? But we know where this man is from. When the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. They still don't believe that he's a Messiah. Like they like, who is this dude, right? Um, and then verse twenty-eight. Then Jesus, still teaching in the temple courts, cried out, "Yes, you know me, and you know where I am from. I am not here on my own authority, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him. Who sent him, Ezra? John." God, yeah. It says, but I know him because I am from him and he sent me. Talking about God the Father, right? It says, at this, they tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. 
I don't want to drag that, but I do want to highlight that a little bit. All right. The last scripture? I mean, the last scripture you read? Verse 30. Mm hmm So, in their mind, they thought to do something, but no one was able to lay hands on him because it wasn't his time for something to happen. How, like, before I even go into elaborate, like how do how do you think that applies to your life in terms of when things are supposed to happen and when things do happen, whether good or bad? Um, I'll say that but God have like a uh, strategic plan for everybody. So certain certain stuff are gonna happen, certain stuff are not gonna happen. And sometime with a plan, you may have some sidetrack. So, like, with Jesus, like, obviously his plan was here to come die for his sins. But them trying to kill him too early uh, was a sidetrack. But good thing, God have the power to just, even though there's a sidetrack, your power to just block block those sidetracks so that you're still on the track um, for your plan and your purpose. Right. That's exactly where I was going with that, like right along those lines. So it's like there's a set time and place for things to take place in our lives, right? Um, and I, I think I was asking somebody else, one of the other youth mem- youth um, in our church the other day, I was like, the, the conversation came up about tattoos. And I asked the question, I was just like, in any event, that you have to make a decision where there's some controversy about it. It's like, oh, like, should Christians get tattoos? Should get Christians get their nose pierced and things like that? I was like, if there's controversy, then there's one thing you can do. You can simply take it to God and trust that he'll give you an answer, right? Instead of listening to what this friend says or that friend says or how they point out in the Bible that this was a part of the ceremonial law and that they didn't want to do this, but Jesus came to fulfill. Like, instead of going back and forth, ask God the question and trust that he'll give you the answer, right? And I said, the objective is to fall in line with the will of God. So I, I posed this question right after I said, I said, imagine if you lived your entire life following the will of God, what your life would be like. Just imagine what that would look like. Like everything, look look at Jesus. Like everything God told Jesus to do, Jesus did. Not a question. And and, and it didn't like and it, and and then like the person I asked, like they were stuck. It was like ooh. And I and I didn't want and I and I didn't want to go any further, but I could have because the next question I was going to ask, him, I was like the next statement I was going to make was, that wasn't all good stuff that Jesus experienced following the will of God. Yeah, he was glorified, and yeah, he was people loved him and followed him and things like that. But he still had to also face persecution because his purpose was bigger than him. What would your life look like if you sought after the will of God each and every day you woke up? God gave you hit the reset button, gave you a second chance. All right, boom. What do you got for me today, God? Talk to me. Just, just some food for thought, right? So, I mean, even with even with this channel or this 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 YouTube thing that you're doing, you know, I, I would see God for inspiration. Like, God, okay, this is what I'm thinking I should do. Let me know. Does it fall in line with you? Because the numbers and and your audience and how you should swing it. If this is what you want to do, if you want to inspire people. I think that it should always be driven by what God wants you to do. Yeah. It's not by chance that you got the both of us here early in the morning. We're doing this, right? Everything is coming together. So I would ask God, like, God, give me a vision. Like, what's happening? Like, where is this going? I want to be in line with where you're taking me. Cool? Yeah. And I do that, like, any, I get an idea or something, I go to God and be like, God, should I do this or should I do something else? And usually that's, that's how the, um, for Friday videos, that's usually how they come about. That's good.
stay at it, man. It's, it's like a, a cycle in a sense. It begins with God. You seek him. Whatever he gives you flows from him to you and then from you to his people. Okay? And then his people give it. It's like a cycle. His people give him praise. His people come to know him. His people are pointed towards him. And God inspires you some more. It flows from you to him, to them, back to him. Keeps going. Continue going to God first. So verse 31 says, still <clears throat> many in the crowd believed in him. They said, when the Messiah comes, will he perform more signs than this man? It's crazy because they believe in him, but yet they still think that he's not the Messiah. Right? Um, so they're kind of like those people. Children of Israel? Huh? You're talking about like the children of Israel? Well, yeah, these these are the people who come from Israel. Yeah, like this is like gen mad generations after, right? But this is I want to relate this to present day, right? Yeah. So they still sort of kind of believe in him as a man that can perform miracles, but they don't believe that he's the Messiah. Um, in order for you to believe that he's the Messiah, you have to have a relationship with him. Right. Like the disciples that followed him, they knew that that man was the Messiah. Like they, they knew, right? They had it. They had encounters with Christ, like no one else, because they, they, they built a relationship with him. So, this is the difference between those who come up to the, 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 um, to the altar, right? That that one Sunday when Jesus is just speaking to you through the pastor or whoever the speaker is. And you find yourself, you boo-hooing, you crying, it's not running down your nose. Okay, cool. You got you got my attention now, God. I believe. But in order for you to call him Messiah, in order for you to call him Lord, Father, that's when it, it, go, it has to go to another level. Like, it has to go beyond is you going to the altar and confessing your sins and accepting him as your Lord and Savior so that you can be saved, it has to go deeper than that. It's like, now you have to build a relationship with him. And this is what these people were lacking. They will follow him for the signs and wonders. They just wanted miracles, miracles after miracles. They wanted miraculous signs, the Bible said. And so, okay, you do a sign, all right. And the next opportunity comes. Uh, do something first. <laughs> yeah, guys. Oh, I believe, yeah. Do, do something first, I can see. And then I believe for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And something happens again. Do another miraculous sign. Turn turn the water into wine. We don't have money. Yeah. We need for a little bit. And it, it just keeps going like that. But my question for you is, mm -hmm. why do you believe? Why do I believe? Mm. In God, right? No. In in the, the metals. In <laughs> the 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 in, why do you believe in McDonald's? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> why are we up early in the water? Who are we talking about? <laughs> I, I just like to clarify so I know exactly what I answered. Okay, make, make sure you don't bleep that out. Make sure you keep that in there, right? Please. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. Oh, God, and God, right? I'm leave it. All right. Uh, okay. I think the reason why I believe is I've seen how terrible my life used to be when I was not aligning it with God. And ever since I've fully dedicated my life to God, obviously ups and downs came, but I lived a way peaceful life, got in less trouble, and was able to do way more stuff and work with way more people and really just got to understand God and just see how he worked in my life and other people's life. And yeah, that's, that's, that's my reason. <laughs> Believe it or not, the Bible tells us that we need to have an answer when people ask us that question. So at least you had an answer. Because some people be like, um, man, that's a good question. <sighs> Can't think about the answer. Like <laughs> the truth, I was doing um doing some evangelism with him like a couple years ago. He was hand, handing out I don't know if it was tracks or books or flyers, whatever it is. It wasn't my church. It wasn't Pope God. I went with someone from my church to 
church he's affiliated with. And I handed it to some guy. He took it. And he said, he said, why do you believe? I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what you mean? What, what, what you mean? You mean? Jesus, you know? just read it. You know what I'm saying? Like, reason. I believe because of Jesus. It was it was crazy, man. It was a humbling experience. Was, I'm like I'm out here trying to hand out these tracks and convince people to come to church and share Jesus with them, but I don't know why I believe. Or or I have to sit down and think. But you have to know your why. You always have to know why. Why you believe. Why you believe. Why you, why you keep getting up every day and serving God. Why you keep going. So never forget your why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brother Jarve, don't ever forget your why. Yeah, tell me again. All right. Um, so verse 32. So the Pharisees heard the crowd whispering such things about him. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple guards to arrest him. Jesus said, I am with you for only a short time, and then I'm going to be, then I'm going to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live scattered among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? Um, what did what did he mean when he said, you will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come? On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Wait, did I go past the end point? Um, at 35, right? Yeah. Okay. So the Jews said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live, scattered among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? Um, the answer is no and yes to that question that they just asked. I mean, he won't necessarily teach the Greeks directly, but our friend Paul goes off and teaches the Greeks. Um, fun fact, the New Testament, most of it is written by Paul, which I think you already know, but it was the original language is also written in Greek. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the times when you see certain words or certain phrases in the Bible, um, when you get there again, you know, you're still developing now, but it's, it's, it's wise to go and see what that English word that we're reading, how it translates back into the Greek. Because sometimes the meaning is a little bit different. Like if you look up fire, if you look up um, love, or if you look up heart, um, certain words they just, they just translate a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. The, the meaning is more profound when you translate it to Greek. Just give you a better understanding of the word and the context of the scripture. All right. Mm-hmm. So these people still don't believe he's a Messiah. Like, dude, where can you possibly go that we won't be able to find you? Like, you just gonna run away to some place that we can't come to? Like, they don't, they're looking at him with their natural physical eyes and they're not looking through their spiritual lens. So 36, because what did he mean when he said, you will look for me, but you will not find me and where I am, you cannot come. Who said that, Jay? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Was that Paul? I'm not sure. Seek the Lord while he may be found. I can't remember who said that, but that, I mean, that just, I don't know, that's a separate thing, but that just brought this to me, to my attention. Like, in the physical, he's telling him, like, they're going to look for him. He's there physically, but then he won't be. Um, But then I think it might have been Paul that said that. And he's saying that in the spiritual, you can look for me. 
um, before it's too late and you won't be able to find me again. Isaiah. Isaiah, okay. Uh, does Paul reference that scripture or was it just Isaiah? Who said just it? Just Isaiah. Okay. Yeah, just Isaiah. All right. Um, so that, that kind of goes for us too. Like people who are here on earth now, you know, in, in, in the, the dispensation of pouring out of the Holy Spirit, um, we have we have the obligation to seek God now before it's too late, before he comes back, right? And accept him in our lives. So hopefully all you guys out there, all of you uh, Ezron's followers, I pray that these uh, videos are enlightening you and, and encouraging you to follow Christ um, and to bring another friend or family member along with you on the journey. Absolutely. If, if there's ever a time to follow Christ, it's not. <laughs> all that's going on with all the uncertainty and with all the loss and you know, all that's going on. The lack, people losing their jobs, people not knowing what to do, people being sick. It's never a time to find Christ. It's find him now. Find him now. So um, join us along for the journey. If you have any prayers, just hit the comment section in Ezra's videos and know that we'll be praying for you. Okay, um, 37. So on the last day, the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Remember he did that to the lady at the well? Yeah, so you already know what he's about to do. Jesus never hits, he about to, he about he never to hits a problem or makes a statement or asks a question from the high level. He's going right to the root, right to the root. They're going to be confused. Now, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this, he meant the spirit, whom those who believed in him were related to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So we can go really, really deep into that if you like, or we can keep a high level about what all of that means. Let's go deep. But the people, the people here. Okay. The interest in time, you can't go that deep. All right. Well, maybe we can bring it back next week and talk about it again. But, um, so th this, this is a good example of like the Greek, like looking up water, right? There's, there's a few elements that the Holy Spirit is related to, um, or oh, is uh, we call it, compared to right? There's water, there's fire, there's oil, there's wind. Um, I don't forget one. Wind, water, fire, fire, oil. I think there's like two more, but. These are the elements that the Holy Spirit is compared to. And, it's, and I think that it is very enlightening if you look up those elements in, in the Greek. Like, what does it say in Greek? How does it translate in Greek? And it'll give you a better understanding so that you'll get that Greek meaning and you'll pop it into this, this part of the scripture and you'll see how it relates to it, right? But just, again, like we'll start high level. So water. Right, Ezra, how many days can you live without drinking water? If you had no food, or all, like, all you had was food, how many days can you live without water? Is it like three or four? Not a lot, right? Definitely not 30 days. It's not a lot at all. Yeah, right? No, no your body is made up of water. So you need to continue. Water needs water, right? You need to continue to replenish it. So this is the same thing. So to, so to go from the natural to the spiritual, spirit needs spirit, right? The spiritual beings that are housed by this fleshly body that we see. Spirit needs spirit. So if we're God's creatures and we're shaped and formed in his image, then we too need the spirit of God flowing in us. Right? We, we should not be trying to live without the spirit inside of it. Make sense? 
Mm-hmm. Just like we can't live without water, we should not be trying to live without the Holy Spirit because then we make a whole bunch of crazy decisions and then Lord knows where that will take us. Um, but then he says, verse 39 says, but this he speak, uh, he of the Spirit. Oh, let me go back to the NIV. By uh, this he meant the Spirit from those who who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So, um, in the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter 4. Yeah, I think it's chapter 4, when Pentecost happens. Jesus is crucified on the cross, comes back. He shows, he comes to see to visit the disciples. He shows proof with the hole in his hand that was formed when they nailed him to the cross. He lets him know, I'm going to be with you for a few days and then I'm going to leave. But I won't leave you alone. I won't abandon you. I'm going to send someone in my place. Um, not a substitute, but an equal. And he won't be just with you, but he'll be in you. Yeah. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Jay, I don't know if you want to go further with the Holy Spirit. Like, why well, was it important for the Holy Spirit? Yeah. To come. Um, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to touch 37 real quick. Like, like, how did he begin? Where did he come from with water? That came out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and you think about chapter four, we talked about a woman at the well. Water was there. So, that, that made sense, right? So now how does water come up in this situation? He was just teaching said nothing about water previously. He's not by a lake, he's not by a river. So now he's talking about living water. So to understand um, the festival of shelter, which is what's happening now, it says a water ceremony was held each day during the festival of shelters with prayers for God to send rain in late autumn. The final day called the Great Day was the climax of the festival when the ceremony was repeated seven times. Water was poured over the altar as Levites sang a song. Anyone who was thirsty may come to me. Jesus fulfilled an essential element in the festival of shelters. He himself is the source of living water available to anyone that believes. So in the context of it, right, that, that's how he began talking about living water. So the people were praying for rain, right? And you know that when it rained, it rained on their crops and their crops grew, right? So not only was he talking about eternal life, but he's saying, come to me, I will bless you, right? I will give you what you need. I am the source of your blessings, right? And so usually we know he talks about what as Jill was saying. He's alluding to one eternal life or the Holy Spirit, right? Either one, the, the end result is eternal life, right? If you're talking about the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, then he's leading you to eternal life. Now, the Holy Spirit, he talks about the Spirit had not yet come because Jesus um, had not yet gone into his glory, right? Um, Jesus had not yet entered the state of humiliation. He didn't suffer as yet. He didn't die, right? That, that's what they're talking about. Whenever they say, Ezra, Jesus has not yet entered into his glory, he didn't die on the cross. That's essentially what they mean right there. He has not entered into his glory. Um, how far? I, I, I don't know, Jay. We can talk about the Holy Spirit for. <laughs> that's a whole another. That's a whole another study. That's a, whole... that's a separate. Yeah. Um, but let's just keep it to this, right? It says so. He says, um, thirty-nine. So if you believe later on, you will receive the Holy Spirit, right? So we talked about that, like God's going to pour out this Holy Spirit so that so right now Jesus is walking with them. So everything that they needed was right before them, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's right there by the side. So everything they needed, he was the source. He just, oh, yo, 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 Jay, you know, I need some food. I'm hungry, right? They just, mm-hmm. just give it to him right then and there. But, um, no, not you, to my Jesus, yeah. <laughs> so he's like but then it says up to that time spirit had not been given since Jesus had not even glorified so certain like remember we just read before certain things have to happen first mm-hmm. Jesus is going to be glorified 
when he um, is crucified mm -hmm. and every person that is there will realize that Jesus was indeed the Messiah because of what takes place on the cross. Cool? Yeah, as who, real quick, who would you say the Holy Spirit is? And when you think of the Holy Spirit, you hear the Holy Spirit, what, what comes to your mind? God. God? What else, though? Jesus? All right. What else besides the, the deity, besides the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Well, I like church, when they mention the Holy Spirit, what comes to mind? What do you think? Or the Holy Ghost. What comes to mind is a bunch of bunch of older people just catching the Holy Ghost at church. That's what comes to mind. We got some work to do, bro. And, and the reason why I ask that too, G, is just to, I guess, solidify what we've been talking about, right? Um, just a lack, and, and it's not you. As this is everyone. Just a lack of uh, understanding of the essential and vital role that the Holy Spirit plays in our lives. Right? So we all have the Holy Spirit once we believe. Mm -hmm. right? um, so much so, we need the Holy Spirit so much so that we cannot live um, a victorious Christian life according to Tony Evans without the Holy Spirit. Right? So Gio was just saying, um, if you're hungry, Jesus is right next to you. like, yo, get some bread. you thirsty, yo, drink that. All right, but now, when Jesus entered into his glory, who are they going to ask? As? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Right? So Jesus, as Gil said, is not a substitute uh, of Jesus. He's the same person, just in spirit form. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So the Holy Spirit is not for just old people. <laughs> or preachers, but he's for everyone, whether you preach or you're in a congregation sitting down. I was so confused on where you were trying to get to. That's why I kept having that look on my face. Like, I was so confused, but that, made, that makes sense now. It makes sense now. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we get to when we get to like John 14, 15, 16, we talk talk more about the Holy Spirit then it will make more sense. make more sense. So come together. All right. So. All right. So forty. Many of the oh yeah, wrap up. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard the saying, said, "Of a truth, this is the prophet." All right. So now they're like, all right. He's spitting something different. It sounds it sound a whole lot different. This guy might be on to something. Um, but then there was others who said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? So again, like they're still trying to figure out, they're still trying to make logic of who Jesus is. Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there was a division among the people because of him and some of them would have taken him but no man laid hands on him so you know king david right Ezron? yes i do yeah they're, so they're saying that based off of the scriptures and everything things aren't lining up right mm -hmm. and, and 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 so they're, they're, there's a divide like should we believe in this dude is he really the messiah is he really christ you know and other people's like yeah, nah, this is the dude this is definitely the dude right um but no one was ready to lay hands on him because there was a time and place for that. Verse 43, so that's the people were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees who asked them, why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke the way this man does, the guards replied. You mean he has deceived you also, the Pharisees restored, retorted? Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed in him? No, 
But this mob that knows nothing of the law, there is a curse on them. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus earlier and who was one of their own number, asked, does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? And they replied, are you from Galilee too? Look into it and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. Then they, then they all went home. So they, they all, it's just, it's like they're getting into confused. politics and things. Like, can this man be the Messiah if he comes out of Galilee? Shouldn't he be coming out of Bethlehem? You know, why? And now that has me thinking too, Jay, like what was God's strategy? What was his purpose for having Jesus come out of the town that he did come out of instead of him coming out of the town that they thought he should come out of? Um, you know, just if I had to take a stab at it without, you know, doing any homework on it. I mean, I wonder if it was because of uh maybe like a heart can like a heart condition like like no like he wanted maybe god wanted people to believe on jesus for who he was and not what he could do and based off of where he came from and oh this guy must be somebody important because he comes from money and maybe he wouldn't be able to reach out to the poor and those who were in need maybe he would only be able to relate to the rich i don't know just i think i think yeah, definitely along those lines. I think I can't remember the scripture exactly, but it says something like um, the way of God that makes man look foolish, something like that. I can't remember exactly, but um, nothing God does most of the time makes sense to us. And so in order to he really came to disrupt our thinking how we see things, how we perceive things. And I, so I, I think that's exactly why, because him coming from somewhere they didn't believe he should come from, that's just who God is, right? He takes things that don't make sense and makes some sense of it, right? Um, There's a much deeper thought in my head I'm trying to get out, but it, it's just never surface level of black and white always something deeper, 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 deeper. He has to disrupt our way of seeing things. Um, and it's crazy. I can't get the thought out of my head. But <laughs> it's along the lines like that you were saying. You know, um, our ways are not his ways. Right. Not his the way he does things, we will never understand. Yeah. But that's that's all that's all I have for um for this week, guys. Me too. Yes. You went on the to the end? Yeah, that was it. Everybody went home. Yeah. They had the whole disruption, then they met together. That was another disruption. Then it was like, you know what? Let's just go home. Leave this for another day. <laughs> well, I, I think we'll touch more on Nicodemus other chapter. Just remember that name. We, we, saw, we saw Nicodemus before though, right? That's right. When he's like, can a man be born again? Like, yeah, is he going back into his mother's womb? Well, that was, that was prior? Yeah. yeah. I think that was John three. Three or four. Yeah, three or four. Three. Yeah. All right, four. Was it John four? John 3. Yeah, John 3, 3. Unless you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Talk to me, Ez. What's your takeaways for today? Takeaway today is obviously I got a little better understanding of the Holy Spirit. Um, because I, I only associated it with older people because I've never really seen the Holy Spirit work anybody other than the older generation. So now I know that it's not just for one, it's not just for them, it's for all of us. And it helps us, it helps us 
in our pad as a Christian tells us what to do, what we shouldn't be doing. That little thing when you're about to do stuff. And yeah, that's that's my takeaway. It's good. Wait till we actually get to the Holy Spirit, bro. Me and Joey ain't gonna shut up. I love it. I love it. Stuff. And especially what you said, you know, a lot of people were looking for the Holy Spirit to do. And that's where our understanding stems from. We, we just want Him to do. It's much more than a doer. You know, He's a natural person. We get to that. Well, this was another successful Bible study. Thank you guys for being here. Um, good thing I did not put on that black shirt today because I would be looking like y'all. Um, no, because my black shirt was right next to this white shirt and I was about to put it on, but I was like, ooh, thank God. Being disobedient. So this is all it's good. You're going to be like, true list out here. But... <laughs> Like I was saying, this is another successful Bible study. I'm going to do the closing prayer, then I'll do my outro. Everybody, uh, reverence for God, by his closed eyes. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. We thank you for this day that you have made. I rejoice in the God and the God. We thank you for the things that you have done and things you're going to continue to do for us, God. We pray as each Saturday as we come together to discuss your word, God. We pray that we'll have a better understanding of your word, God. We pray that you'll be able to point out key information to us, God. We pray that we're able to make each other build and just feed back off of each other, God. We pray that the audience will be able to have a good understanding the way we do of the scripture, God. We pray that these videos will be able to use for a high purpose and really help the people that are not of you or the people that are struggling to be able to understand more of your word, God. We pray that these videos will be a blessing unto people, God. In Jesus' name, blessing in God. Amen. 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 This is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for coming back. If you haven't liked the video already, like, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. So anytime I upload, you have a, a notification. See that I upload. And that's it. Peace.